If you're in the market of tapping into the awesome power of community-led growth, then you've probably come across Discord servers and you've probably got very confused by them. There's a ton going on, it's really, really complicated and often it can be very difficult to know what to do and what works. And the reality is that with Discord servers, it is incredibly hard to get them to work. Thousands of new Discord servers come online every day and only a fraction of them manage to retain a community and build something that people come back to day after day after day. But you're in luck because last week I got to sit down with Sahan. Now, this guy is an absolute G when it comes to creating Discord servers. He manages the Discord community from Colin and Samir, MKBHD, and a number of other top YouTube and creators. And in the conversation that I had with him, we distilled five key laws when it comes to building Discord servers. And in this video, I'm going to take you through each one of those laws with practical tips that you can apply to building a Discord server today. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Law number one, if the Discord server is there for any particular person, it is not a community, it is a audience. And your job as somebody who's building that community is to get the community members to have value from each other. So let's take a look at that in practice to make it a little bit more real. And we'll start with a clip from Sahan on how he thinks about approaching creating new Discord channels. If you, if you have a reason on the server to, to keep going, like as a user, you wanna to come to one place and actively use part of the server for that, that really helps a lot. Like that's why I think the Colin Tamir server is actually a pretty unique place. Like as you mentioned, like thumbnail, thumbnail feedback and video feedback is always very, very active. Uh, relative to like some of the other Dis Discord servers I'm on as well. So the channel that Sahan is referring to here is the thumbnail feedback channel on the Colin and Samir Discord. Now we're going to be talking a lot about this Discord, so I'll just give you a quick overview. Basically, it's a place where creators come together to talk about their different creative endeavors, whether that's their YouTube channel or their newsletter or their podcast. And it really is a vibrant community full of like-minded individuals. It's exactly what a community should be. And the channel that we're talking about here is the thumbnail feedback channel seems really really basic but actually there's a lot of components here which make it a great idea for a discord channel the first component is that anyone can get involved very very easily simply by putting a thumbs up or a thumbs down people post their thumbnails in the channel you can get instant feedback you can very very easily involve yourself in that community the second important thing from it is that it's just valuable if I have a YouTube thumbnail, I want to see what people think about it. I can post two different options. I can instantly get feedback about whether people are enjoying that. This is actually a service that on my old company we used to pay for uh, when we were doing product tests or when we were doing tests on thumbnails. We would actually send this to a third party who would pay people to come in and vote. And what Colin and Samir have managed to do is actually create this in their Discord for free to people to use. And the main point of this channel is people aren't coming here to look for the feedback from Colin and Samir. Sure, that'll be a nice bonus for them, but the main thing is they're getting value off that community. So you as a community builder have built that channel that people are coming in and feeding off each other. That's why it's such a powerful channel. So think about that when you're creating your Discord channels and Discord servers. How can you facilitate an environment where the community are bouncing off each other and getting ideas and feedback from each other? Law number two, your Discord needs to be structured enough that people can find what they want, but unstructured enough to facilitate those random kind of conversations. This is so difficult to get right in Discord servers because often you go into one, it's just a mass of channels, it's just a complete free for all, people messaging here, there and everywhere. There's no order to it. On the flip side, you don't just want a forum that's not live and not active and not with people having uh, just kind of insights. So we'll again look at Colin and Samir's channel and dissect two different uh, channels that they have, the analytics channel and the video feedback channel. So in the analytics channel, this is more of a free for all channel. It's people just messaging kind of random different insights that they've had. There's not really much structure to it. People can reply and that's really as it should be. It is just a place for insights, it's a place for off the wall ideas. It's not meant to be structured. Now compare that to their video feedback channel. They utilize Discord's kind of forum layout here. And what it allows is for threads to take place and deep 
deeper conversations around one particular topic, which is usually the video that someone's posted for feedback. And this gives it the structure you need because you've got people coming in, you can see which ones are more active, you can easily kind of separate out the different um, content that people have posted. So it just gives it that much bit of order that you do need uh, to make the Discord channel feel like a place that you want to be. Law number three, give your community ownership. Again, let's hear from Sahan on one little tactic that they used on the Colin and Samir Discord server to get people engaged and to make them feel ownership in what they were building. Colin was just saying that um, here is a published press hat. It had like the camel print on it. Uh, which he, he showed to Samir but didn't bring for Samir but then uh, he, he just elaborated that like yeah we want to we wanna do something around the concept of story hunters um, and we want to involve the community in like a merch drop. So the way I see it with ownership is there's three different levels. The level that Sahan is referring to here is a mixture of level one and two. So level one is just give the community votes, uh, give them a say in the direction of where the server is going. And that's done on the Story Hunters channel by people uploading different ideas of merch that they want to be able to see come into life and then people voting on them. The idea being that the better ideas or the more positively voted ideas will then be pushed forward and it makes the community feel like they're building something that is theirs. The second tier that we can look at in rewards, so you've got at the top, just giving people ownership in terms of votes. Then you've actually got giving people ownership in terms of physical goods or maybe specific Discord roles. So that could be rewarding people for their contributions by giving them merch. And I think the idea of the uh, Story Hunters channel is to actually do this merch drop and potentially even reward people for their contributions with this merch. And this is really powerful because again, I think if you can connect the physical world with the digital world, in a way, uh, like Notion did. I did a video on Notion a few uh, months back uh on their ambassador program, which I'm part of, you got given like a tote bag and stickers. Just really, really, I think important to try and connect uh, that community with the physical items. Now, the third level of the reward that you have is actually financial rewards or kind of shared ownership. And a great example of this is Framer. So Framer, who we covered last week, what they actually do is facilitate an environment for the creators on the Framer platform to earn money from it. You can also do this on Discord servers with NFTs. And NFTs can be programmed to distribute rewards and money to people from any money that's kind of being made from the community. Unfortunately, you see a lot of bad actors in the crypto space that are kind of doing this in, in a negative way. But I think the general concept of distributing money back to your community is an incredibly powerful one, which if you really want to take that kind of ownership and engagement to the final level is something that you might want to explore. The final law we're gonna go through is what I call productize your Discord. And to understand why we need this law, let's listen to Sohan talk about one of the biggest problems when it comes to creating Discord communities. Discord engagement is a very tricky thing, uh, just in general, um, because mm. as a platform, it's not as um, intuitive and like, uh, not just intuitive, but you don't typically spend as much time on Discord as you do on other apps and stuff, like social yeah. media, like your media apps and whatnot. So, that's like one tricky part. That that uh, that's why I kind of say like Discord engagement kind of goes in waves. So Sahan's got to the crux of one of the problems with Discord servers here is that people just don't inherently spend that much time on them compared to WhatsApp or Twitter or other social uh, networking platforms. Discord's average usage time is a lot lower. And I think there is ways around this. And actually on the Colin and Samir Discord, they've already started to explore this in some ways. And it's what I'm calling, yeah, productizing your Discord. So it's not thinking about your Discord as a messaging platform, but actually a product in and of itself. And one tangible example of this in the server is the thumbnail channel. So this just started off as a way for people to post thumbnails but then they iterated on it and they actually created a bot within the Discord server that allows you to create thumbnails just from prompts like you would with uh, Mid Journey or Dali or something like this. And I think this is like a good early example of how you can start to think about your server as a product. 
you can just build apps on top of Discord. Yes, it makes the servers complex. Yes, it makes them sometimes more unintuitive to use, but it also makes them a lot more powerful. And I think by putting on that product management hat, by thinking about your Discord as a product, not just as a messaging platform, you can actually get people to come back day after day after day because there is stuff of value in there. Another example of this is the, you probably need a robot uh, Discord server, which is another good one by Greg Eisenberg. And in there, they've also started to experiment with this idea of building products into the Discord. Uh, they have a mid-journey bot in there at the moment that people can kind of bounce ideas around. But I generally think this is a very kind of uh, early stage, underserved element of the Discord market, that people are not taking full advantage of the platform and building apps within their Discord. They still very much view it as a messaging platform. So if you're uh, someone who's looking to build your community and build out your Discord server, I think one key thing that you should be looking at is, yeah, different apps that you can build into the platform. So hopefully those laws are going to be helpful for you when it comes to building your own Discord server. And if you want to get more community insights, we have a ebook for you called the Community Gods Playbook. In that ebook, we basically tear down all the top community builders in the world. Uh, we go through how they built their community, the tactics that they've used, so you can apply them to building what we think is the most powerful thing in the world right now, which is a community for community-led growth of your audience or your brand. So thanks a lot and enjoy the rest of your day.